ever needed Windows XP on your modern PC? It looks kind of weird if you ask me seeing Windows XP on a modern PC. So today I'm going to show you how you can revive Windows XP and install it on your modern PC without any issues. Make sure to stay tuned. Hi friends, today I'm going to help you how you can fix the issues when you tr if you try installing Windows XP on your modern PC so you don't have to destroy your PC if you fail doing it. So without any further ado, let's go. In order to do this, you will need four tools. First, you'll need the Windows XP ISO. You'll need this Create Rescue Media file, which is a Power ISO so executable. You'll need NLite, and you'll need a driver, which you need to integrate into the Windows XP ISO. So the first thing we need to do is download and install NLite, which I already have here. And I'm gonna give you a link in the description. What? And to download it if you need to and now we'll need to open up and light and we, you will need to download a SATA driver for your motherboard so I recommend figuring what driver you need to download using your target which will show up what you need to do you will need to open up device manager and you'll need to find IDE SATA API controllers. You will need to go to properties, go to details, and look for hardware IT. So I recommend you do this on your target PC. So you'll need to find the numbers. 9C83 so if I want to install it on my PC I'm gonna need this so you'll need to download the driver for your specific motherboard in order to do this so I have downloaded the file and I'm going to move it to my desktop close edge now so now we're gonna open up N light we need to download one feature before we use it so I'm gonna do that so now we're gonna open up and light and start building our custom ISO so first we're gonna click on next so we're going to browse for the ISO but first we need to extract the contents of it so what we're gonna do is extract it into a folder and with the power of editing, we're gonna fast forward to this. So now, so what you need to do right now is go into the drivers and create the little ISO. Click on next. Driver, I'll click on next and I want to start the process. So, this will just finalize the ISO and then make it bootable. And now we'll just, we're gonna do some other stuff after this, so I'm gonna time lapse this real quick. ISO is finished, we're gonna open up our ISO and now we'll click on OK to do this as administrator. Now I want to choose the PE architecture to be the 32 bit one and with this PE 3.11, click on next, we'll select USB drive and we want to select our USB drive, not for example, the one terabyte hard drive I have here, I don't want to wipe that, I will wipe my USB drive. And 
now this is going to download the files and make a bootable Windows PE USB and after that we will need some of the contents of the Windows XP ISO to do it so now we will wait Now we can see that the ISO is done, now we'll click on next and we'll finish with and here is our ISO. And now what we want to do with the ISO is mount it. And we need the i386 folder of it to copy over to our USB drive which I already have done. And now we're pretty much done. I've copied my product key and some commands that I will leave in the description as well. So now we'll just get loaded. it. And now let's move on to my desk to finish this tutorial. Alright, so here is our USB drive. I'm going to plug it in to the laptop and I will going to power it up and we need to boot this into the boot menu. Now we are booting into Windows PE 3.11. Now we'll see we have a Windows Vista like boot screen. There we go. So we'll let this thing boot. Now, if you wonder why the screen is flickering so much, that's Probably due to the shutter speed of my smartphone not matching the refresh rate of, of this laptop screen, but that, that doesn't happen in real life. So first thing we want to do is wipe the drive when I install Windows XP to first we need to put sorry, this part and this disk. Now I'm going to select this one and put on clean. Make sure you have backed up all the data on the drive you created before it's too late. Now we want to create partition primary. And I want to ass assign a letter. I'm going to choose D because C is already taken by this one. And now I want to list the volumes. And now we have volume 1 selected. <coughs> and now we want to mat the volume 1. I'm going to format quick files. So it will be NTFS. Now I'm gonna exit this part and now we're going to open up our USB drive. And now we have this command here where I'm gonna leave a link. I'll put this in the description if you need it. So we have E is the USB letter, which in this case, yes, it is. And C should be the internal drive letter. So we copy this and change words for C to D, that's my drive, and now oh, I'm going to enter, and now we have the Windows XP setup screen, now we're going to click on next, we we'll accept the license terms, and we're going to put in our product key, and the rest of the setup should be okay, if you, if you integrated the proper driver, it won't give you an error about the hard drive. An ACPI error, you want to press F7 during the first setup screen. And if you want to utilize more than 2 gigs of RAM, you want to press F5 during the first setup screen. You know where it's blue, you know, it's your loading files. Then, and that's pretty much it for today's video. Make sure you have liked this video, subscribe, turn on the notifications, check out the next two videos I'll put up on the screen and I'll see you all in the next video.
バイバイ。